are less than three months away from the November midterm elections. Primary voters head to the polls, uh, headed to the polls yesterday in uh, New York and in Florida. We want to take a look at what the results mean for Democrats who are hoping to hold on to control of the House and the Senate. And so here we have to break down those results. CBS News Executive Director of Elections and Survey, Anthony Salvanto. But wearing a phenomenal gray suit that I complimented before we came on. And everybody, <laughs> attention to detail. This man knows detail. And, and as you like can tell, I said, coming from you, that is high praise. <laughs> I was going to say, and this man likes gray suits. It. And Anne-Marie Green, you look, you look phenomenal oh, today. It's well right. to share all the love. Meanwhile, we're eating into Anthony's time while we compliment <laughs> no, each other. Right. Pat <laughs> Ryan's win in New York is being characterized as a type of bellwether. What does the data show you? Yeah, you know, we've been talking about the primaries all summer, but every now and then one of these special elections becomes the focus of the political world because, A, it's a Democrat against a Republican. But in this case, in the case of the New York 19th, you have a district that is close in its partisanship. So both parties were looking at this as a test. And what turned out was that Democrats had a strong showing as Ryan wins it, right? So we made that projection, but as we were, let me just sort of take you inside yeah. those numbers as we were doing it. The turnout there was really strong. And what we saw was that some of those counties were trending between 30 and even close to 40% of a presidential election. Wow. So a lot of folks are going to read that as, okay, this is something that's motivating Democrats. Is it something that could be maybe a look ahead to, to the fall. I always say never overread a special election, mm. but certainly this is one that a lot of people are going are gonna to talk about for so a while. I'm not sure if you know this answer or not, yeah. but I'm just so <laughs> curious about the population, the demographics. Mm. Who's in this area that's voting? Yeah, it's a lot of working class voters. That's going to be important, right? It's in upstate New York, upper towards the upper Hudson Valley. Um, what's also interesting about that is once you get away from New York City and you get into that, that upper Hudson Valley region, you've got a lot of potentially competitive areas. And New York in general is going to have a handful of competitive districts yeah. for that very reason. And I think part of that does put the magnifying glass then again on can Democrats win a little bit more of that white working class vote? that has kind of gotten away from them mm -hmm. in recent cycles. You want to point to it on the map? We have this big fancy screen. We the do special election, generally we, speaking, was where? We do have a, this big fancy map. <laughs> it's up in here. <laughs> the reason I'm not, well, let's be very transparent. The reason I'm not drawing it is this is in the old congressional right. district. And for people who aren't hardcore political junkies, let's just explain. These are the new congressional districts where they're mm. holding primaries. But after redistricting, they redrew them in New York. And in fact... What's interesting about New York is that there could be four or five that are really competitive, right? Four or five that are really competitive in the fall. And that's, that's a lot more than Democrats had hoped for, quite mm. frankly. Interesting. They had tried to gerrymander New York in ways that Republicans gerrymandered states that they control. And because of court challenges, it didn't really work out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head on down to Florida. Um, sure. Talk to us about the, how House Representatives Charlie Crist and Val Demings did in their races and what that tells us about their potential stack-ups against Republicans. Yeah, so let's start with Chris. Now, this is a very convincing win. And what we want to take away from Crist's win is he's going to go up against Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis is going to get national attention because... He's out there. He's already traveling the country in support of other Republican candidates. There's speculation in the political world. Maybe he runs for president. If Trump doesn't, maybe if Trump does. So Democrats here are running in a trending red state. I want to emphasize that. We all sort of came of age thinking Florida is the big battleground. Florida is the swing state. Florida has been trending red. No question about it. But does this campaign maybe start to put a dent in Ron DeSantis? Maybe start to show way, places where Democrats can sort of weaken his overall appeal or approval. Um, so that's one that makes the Chris win, his former governor, really important. And then the, um, the Val Demings race is interesting because when we look at that, we're going to see whether or not um, Val Demings can, uh, can knock off Marco Rubio. That, again, it's going to be it's going to be an uphill battle, frankly. Again, you know, Marco Rubio has done well traditionally with a lot of the key demographic groups in Florida. And again, it's trending red, but it'll be closely watched.
So then what do the primaries? I know it's early, and yeah. we just cracked a joke about how we all, we're always asking to make predictions, and uh, you do polling <laughs> numbers, you do not have a crystal ball. However, uh, what do these primaries say about the Democrats' you know, opportunity to hang on to the Senate? Yeah, I always say to people, forget about predicting for a minute and start trying to understand what's happening. Because that's what people really want to know. Even predictions are right. often people's just shortcut for, tell me about my world, tell me about the country, mm -hmm. okay? Let me start with the Senate. The Senate is an overall toss-up. The Dems could hold control, the Republicans could take control. And we're going to talk a lot about a handful of states. This, I can confidently say, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada. Those are the ones we're going to be here talking about a lot. So you imagine now if you were to say Democrats, and, and there's some polling that suggests they could, if the Democrats were to say, take Pennsylvania, that goes a long way towards them holding on to control. You know, Republicans think they have a chance to take Nevada. Maybe we go to Wisconsin and there's a Republican incumbent there. If Republicans hang on there, and I'm just going to game out scenarios for this. Then we get to Georgia and we're going to be talking about Georgia a lot. Yeah. Maybe even runoffs in Georgia. There are a lot of scenarios in here that we're going to be watching very closely. But this is the battleground. This is the battleground landscape for that tight Senate control. Wow. Uh, Anthony, always great having you here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks you. Anthony. Thank you.